Okay, this morning we are talking about alternative therapy. So last week we talked about conventional approaches to tick disorders. And this week we're talking about the alternatives. What are those alternatives? What are people looking at? And we're gonna talk about how I look at alternatives, what alternatives we're using, because we're obviously using an alternative approach, and how a combination of them can actually be really, really successful. So let's have some tea and then let's dig in. So last week we talked about one of the therapies was behavioral therapies. And some of you hear it known as CBIT, which is Comprehensive Behavioral Intervention for Ticks. And it can be effective for managing ticks. It is one of the things that is on the list of conventional besides deep brain stimulation and prescription medication. So it's, it is what I honestly consider an alternative. Um, but when we are looking at things like CBIT, we are looking at the behavioral therapy. Parents need to understand that it does take a lot of time and dedication. And I've had many parents tell me it's not the best choice for little kids because it is so much time that you have to put into the process. And what it basically teaches is competing movements. So if your child feels like they need to jerk their neck, when you do CBIT, they're gonna teach you, okay, well, instead of jerking your neck, move your finger instead. So it's a competing movement. This is, this is what that CBIT is really looking at. But it takes a lot of focus and concentration. Most kids are going to a CBIT therapist several times a week, whether they're seeing them in person or online. And then they also have to go home and incorporate those kinds of behavioral therapies into their lives. So CBIT can be effective for older kids, not necessarily as effective for little kids just because it's so much work. But what my what CBIT therapist colleagues have told me is they feel that CBIT is most beneficial when it is used in conjunction, conjunction with other therapies. So things like looking at functional lab testing and figuring out what's going on under the hood. So yes, could it be a great combination? It could. Have I had a lot of people who've gone through CBIT and felt like, it wasn't the right fit for them. Why? Because you're not getting to the root. You're not figuring out, well, why am I having this urge in the first place? So yeah, you're, you're compete, have a competing movement. You're trying to stop the other movement, but you're still doing a movement. You're still doing something and you still have to focus on that thing that you're doing. So CBIT, in my opinion, can be beneficial for older kids, but I think it's more beneficial when you're doing it in conjunction with something else. Something else that we really, really love, number two, is acupuncture. And I feel like it is a very, we're gonna call it complementary, a complementary alternative approach to what we do in our office. Why? Because when we look at the meridians, when we look at the way that acupuncture works, the way that we look at Chinese medicine is you have different meridians and they are using these, these meridians to get you back in balance. So maybe they're putting a needle here and maybe they're putting a needle here and it's very, very relaxing. It is a great way to get your child to relax, as long as they're not scared of needles. My child loves acupuncture, and I have several clients. Brooke, who is hosting our parent support group on Fridays, starts this Friday, and I'll tell you about it at the end. They have loved acupuncture. She said it's been amazing for them. Um, I have another client in Thailand who said that they are loving the acupuncture as a complementary approach. Why? Because it's very, very calming to the nervous system. We know that our kids have imbalanced immune and nervous systems. And so being able to use an approach like acupuncture is very calming to that nervous system. Um, and, I, and I love acupuncture as a complementary approach. We did acupuncture before we did all of the testing. It was just one of those alternatives that we tried. Yes, my son loved it. Was, it. was it the thing that put his ticks into remission? No, but it was very calming for him. So it was got him to a different place where he could kind of concentrate more on what he was doing. So I love acupuncture as a complementary approach. The next two things are things that we actually do in our practice with our clients every day. So number three is looking at nutritional therapies, looking at certain dietary changes to help alleviate symptoms. Does changing diet alleviate all symptoms? No. Why? Because our kids are in this perfect storm. And when we look at test results, and any of my clients who are watching can tell you this, it wasn't just one thing that we see on the test. It's many things that we see on the test. And then we have to connect that back to what is going on in your child's life. So when we can look at things like food sensitivity, we can run a test. Well, what are these delayed food sensitivity reactions your child is having? 
Then we can look at genetics and say, okay, well, they shouldn't eat these foods based on food sensitivity. They shouldn't eat these foods based on their genes. And then we should make these changes based on, you know, what's going on in their gut. So we're going to look at multiple factors when we're looking at quote unquote nutritional therapy. It is multiple things. I am not just going to say, you know, go gluten free. Although I do say go gluten free. For everybody, it is a combination. It is not just gluten, it is wheat, it is dairy, it is eggs, it is grains, depending on what we're looking at. So we do a lot of nutritional therapy in my practice with clients as an alternative approach. Is it effective? Yes, I have a child in there who can tell you that things like gluten and dairy for him are some of the most impactful things for his tics. The other thing is sugar. He can tell you when he overdoes the sugar that he just doesn't feel well. So. We know nutritional therapy is effective and there's actually a really good study about going gluten-free and low sugar. We talked about it on a previous episode, but it was not accepted by the Tourette's Association because the Tourette's Association felt that there wasn't a big enough sample size. However, everybody in the study did see a huge increase in their symptoms. They didn't accept it because it wasn't a big enough amount of people. The other thing, number four, that we're going to kind of look at and something else that we use is herbal supplementation. Yes, I do recommend a lot of herbal supplementation. It is not the same for everybody because when we start to look at your gut, when we start to look at your genes, when we look at everything else that's going on with all of your other, your testing, we can really look at what exactly supplements your child or you as an adult may need to help alleviate some symptoms. So there we have a combination of nutritional then we have a combination of supplements. And I get all of my clients to the point where we do focus on genetic nutrition. And what does that mean? We are focusing on the nutri nutrients that your genes need for you to have an optimal life. So yeah, we're using nutritional therapy. We're using herbal supplements. The other main thing we use is testing. We need to know what's going on under your hood. I also love number five is mind body techniques. You just heard me share a story about my son. And do you know what made the biggest difference? Mindset. Mindset makes the biggest difference. Because if I had said, oh, this is just, it's too hard. I can't do this, I'm all alone. I would have, we would not be where we are today. But because I was like, I do not have a choice. I have to help this child. We have to make these changes. Mindset made a difference. And so I love mind body techniques. And it's not just mindset, but I love meditation. I love mindfulness. I love yoga. I have talked to many parents in the last week about, I do a lot of my own meditation. Every morning I meditate with Dr. Joe Dispenza. Why do I love Dr. Joe Dispenza? Because he has done a lot of research. I am a data junkie. I am a nerd for wanting to know the science behind it. And so he has taken rooms of 1,500 people, 2,000 people, the people that come to his conferences and study them. And then he has some of the most comprehensive studies on meditation of anybody on the planet. And so he knows how important it is to do this meditation, to center yourself and to change your brain waves. And you can do it with your kids. So I love Dr. Joe Dispenza's uh, children's meditations. He has three, he has three kids meditations. Always start with the first one. Don't do the two walking meditations until your kid is a good meditator, but you can get the children's meditation. It's a laying meditation. You can lay in the bed with them. You can lay on the floor with them. You can put out your yoga mats. It's about 20 minutes of meditation. Don't worry if you can't get through the first 20 minutes. Do five minutes, work up to 10 minutes, work up to 15 minutes, work up to 20 minutes. It is a really, really, really good way to calm the nervous system. It is a great way to change your brain waves. And I can tell you as someone who spent the last four months dealing with some chronic illness issues, meditation has changed the game. And I was really a good meditator previously, and I was like, gotta get back on get back on the meditation train, and it's amazing, amazing, amazing. So if you're a parent looking for an alternative or complimentary therapy, if you're a parent going through our program, Dr. Joe Dispenza, go to shop, go and get the children's uh, meditation. Don't get the walking meditations. They're, you're not ready for that. Start with that beginner meditation. They are really great ways to calm the nervous system and reduce the frequency and severity of tics. It really works well. My son is a huge fan of um, meditation. If you can't afford, I think it's $25. If you can't afford the Dr. Joe Dispenza $25 meditation, you can go to YouTube. There's the Honest Guys on YouTube. 
They've got 10 minute, 15 minute free meditations. Sometimes if I don't wanna use my paid Dr. Joe Dispenza meditation, like this morning, I get on YouTube. I did a 35, doc, 35 minute Dr. Joe Dispenza meditation this morning and it was on YouTube and it was free and it didn't cost me a darn thing. So your kids have the ability to meditate and if you've never meditated, it's time friend. You get it together, get your kids on board and do some mind body techniques. Love it. Okay. Number six is occupational therapy. Yes, we have done occupational therapy. My son was uh, diagnosed with sensory processing disorder. We were sent to occupational therapy. We were prescribed 12 sessions, 12 sessions. And in the middle of the occupational therapy, what we are really doing with occupational therapy, oh, before I get to the middle piece, is we are looking at how you can cope and have strategies for adapting to your environment. So how do you manage ticks? It's not about reducing ticks, it's how do you manage them? They use therapy pressure, they use sensory integration, they do some te relaxation techniques as well. We did a lot of like swimming and cross body stuff for the sensory processing. We got six, six sessions in. And the therapist called and said, hey, we're gonna go ahead and cancel the rest of your sessions. Oh, why? Why are you gonna cancel the rest of the sessions? She goes, your son no longer qualifies. She said, we don't know what you did to him, but he no longer qualifies. He does not show the signs of sensory processing disorder any longer. So in the middle of the occupational therapy that we were doing, we did genetic testing. We got him on a genetic nutrition protocol, completely changed everything. I was getting calls from the teacher. Oh my gosh, what did you do? He's like a new child. Kicked, got kicked out of occupational therapy. So yes, occupational therapy can be a great way to help manage frequency and severity, but do you want to manage them or do you want to reduce them? Do you want to get them into remission? What is your goal? Is it management? And everyone's gonna be different, it's management. We just want them to manage it. We just wanna know how, how to deal with life. And that's fine if that is your goal. But then you can have the goal of, hey man, we really wanna reduce the symptoms. Or we'd like to at some point get to the point where those symptoms are in remission. All right, number seven is biofeedback. We have a lot of people who love biofeedback. I think again, it is a great complementary option. So biofeedback is electronic sensors that monitor your bodily functions like muscle tension and heart rate. And then we get real time feedback um, and we can learn how to control our physiological responses. It's really kind of layman's terms how it works. People use biofeedback for other stuff like food sensitivities. I am one of those providers that don't find that that is really valid. I just have not found it to be a valid source of testing for food sensitivities, but it can be complementary for the management of tick disorders. Again, we're talking about what are your goals with a tick disorder? Do you wanna manage it? Do you wanna reduce it? Do you wanna get it into remission? What are your goals? Chiropractic care like acupuncture can be very calming. You have you know, your spine, and sometimes you have some issues with your spine. Maybe there's some alignment issues. You know, if your kid is sitting in a chair all day, or maybe they were in an accident, they fell off their bike, there could be alignment issues. Um, so with chiropractic care, you're gonna have a provider that's going to adjust your spine. They're going to adjust your back. Chiropractic care can be complementary. Is it a cure-all? No, it is not. I have found that we've done chiropractic for years. My son started doing chiropractic as a baby for ear infections. So long before he ever had an apparent tic disorder. Was it relaxing for him? Yes, anything that's going to relax the nervous system is very complimentary. Um, but I have not found with any of my clients that they feel like chiropractic was the cure because they wouldn't come to me otherwise. Um, comp it's complimentary in the fact that you're you're getting your spine back in track. You're getting your alignment where it needs to be. It can be very relaxing. But in my experience, I find that it is simply a, a, a complementary approach to what we are already doing. So that was number eight is chiropractic. And then number nine is home, uh, homeopathic. And I do have a lot of people that come to me who do homeopathy. Um, would they come to me if the homeopathy was effective? No. They wouldn't, they wouldn't be here. If what you are, were currently doing was effective, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be watching this video. You wouldn't be going through my program. You wouldn't be here. So when you start to think about all of the stuff you've tried, we've tried all of these things. When you start to think about all of the stuff that you have tried, you would not be here if they worked. Yes, there are many things that are complimentary. So as we talk about homeopathic remedies, 
Homeopathic remedies are tailored to individuals' specific symptom needs. So if you're going to a, home a homeopath, you should really have a two to three hour introductory session. They should ask you the inside, outside, upside down of every symptom your child has ever had because they are not just gonna say, oh, here's, this is for ticks. They are going to really start to analyze that data. So when you're doing homeopathy, you should have probably a two to three hour intake session with that provider. You have to remember that a lot of the homeopathic remedies contain lactose. That is the base, is lactose. If you have a child who has a dairy sensitivity, that may not be an option for you. Yes, there are lactose-free solutions. But basically, when we look at homeopathy, it is not what we do in my practice. So we're looking at alternative therapies, nutrition, diet, testing. We look at diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation. Homeopathy is looking at like cures like, meaning, for example, you have arsenic poisoning. In homeopathy, they're gonna give you a little teeny tiny tablet with a not even registerable amount of arsenic to get rid of your arsenic poisoning. It means homeopathy is like cures like. So they're gonna give you something, for example, that would normally cause a tick to help with a tick. And they dilute them with water depending on like thousands of times. So depending on your, your what, what your body needs. So like I said, um, you wanna make sure that you're going to a trained homeopath who can advise you on all of these things. It's not just as simple as like, oh, my kid has tick, what's a homeopathy remedy for a kid with a tick and then going down to natural grocers and getting something off the shelf. That is not how it works. You need a really good homeopathic provider who can do two to three hour intake and really break it down for you. I have not found that it is complimentary to what we are doing. In fact, what I have found is that the people who try to do our program with homeopathy at the same time, there are too many variables involved, meaning we don't know what's, what is working and what is not working because we have these two separate variables. So I don't find homeopathy to be a complementary approach to what I am doing with my clients. Um, and, and I really kind of tell people like, I think you should pick one or the other and decide which one works for you. Um, Cause I don't think that the two things work well together. So those are the really the top nine alternative therapies. You have behavioral therapy like CBIT, you have acupuncture, you have nutritional therapy, you have herbal supplements, you have mind-body techniques, occupational therapy, biofeedback, chiropractic care, and homeopathy. Those are really kind of the top alternative and or complementary therapies. I, as a holistic provider, holistic meaning looking at the connection of the whole body, do not feel like one of these out, outweighs the other. One of these is gonna be your magical pill. For us, it is a combination of many things. This is why we use comprehensive neuroimmune analysis. This is why we are looking at that data in your body. What is going on under the hood? Your child's ticks are like your check engine light. If your check engine light comes on, you're taking your car to the mechanic, right? It's the same thing with your child. Hey, they're having a tick. Oh, their check engine light is on. That should lead you to think, ooh, what's going on? What triggered that? Is it environment? Is it biological? Is it physical? Is it mental? What is happening in that process? This is where we use the testing. This is where we are looking at that data to figure out what's going on under the hood. Then we're comparing and contrasting, connecting the dots with your child's health history. And then we're able to come up with a plan, long-term and short-term goals. It is not an overnight approach. It is not an overnight approach. It is a lot of work, just like I said at the beginning of this. It is a lot of work, and it is a lot of work that you're gonna keep doing. That work becomes second nature. You're gonna be like, okay, these are the recipes they like, these are the things they like, these are the things that we are gonna do. It becomes second nature, and then they're gonna get to be 17 or 18 and have a car, and they're gonna do whatever the hell they want. But that being said, um, they're, the process that we are doing is looking at all of the perfect storm in the body. We're not just using one approach. We're using many approaches. 